All right, back here for game five on the play. I uh, made some slight adjustments in sideboarding. I brought this card in. Felt like Gideon was just a little too slow and awkward and easy for Ross to get around, and I kind of just want some more early defense. So I'm going to try this. Uh, not traditionally what you would expect to be good in a like a green creature matchup, but I think it should be fine, especially because of Shaman of the Pack. Yep. My hand is solid. Um, just have a good early curve I'm going to keep. Gonna Great get a draw. Get a I'm going to get a swamp and play a draw. Excuse me. 19. You're at 19. Oh, I hope I can die. I won't massacre you so hard. <laughs> but I just brought in a 1 3. <laughs> but it doesn't make sense. You can keep your 1 3. You just have Good. to take 12. Good draw. Play a hanger back for one. Your turn. Okay, uh, I was going to play this visionary off of the trapper anyway in case we drew a one mana spell or a come to enters the battlefield tap land, but I already drew one, so now I'm definitely going to do it. Go to 18. This, you can go. Um, now that we, let's see. Now that we drew our f this, I'm more interested in just thinning our deck. So I'm going to go ahead and fetch. 18 all. Get a forest. Can't cast Reflector Mage off of that. True. Maybe that is actually a consideration, but I think it'll be fine. Maybe I'm supposed to get a Plains, actually. No, I don't think so. Hand has all green cards, so. O thing. Play a Sylvan Advocate. Pass the turn. Hmm. Hmm. That is mildly awkward. But not going to stop us from playing this Nissa and plusing. Yep. You can go. Add a counter to my hanger back walker. Yep. Okay. Um, so now we can decide whether we want to attack with our hanger back walker or leave it back. I think just threatening lethal damage against the Nissa this turn is important. Basically, uh, basically forces Ross to chump with his plant since that's functionally the same thing. And it would also deal two damage to the Nissa. And the difference between two and three on the Hangerback Walker, given our hand, isn't too significant. So, I'm gonna attack Nissa. I will chump the Advocate. Yep. I think our best bet is gonna be cashing in this Nissa next turn. So, it's not gonna play an Arashian Cleric. I'll go to twenty-one. Yep. Play Lumbering Falls. Pass the turn. Hmm. Could play these two, and that would be would give us a wide array of blockers. Actually, hmm, what are we gonna hit that makes this better? I don't think there's anything actually, so I like just playing these guys, yep. getting an elf, cashing in this Nissa, using up all their dice. And now I can actually attack this visionary because of Trapper. Um <clears throat> excuse me. Uh no blocks. You got a nineteen. Yep. You can go. It's pretty good. Um, so whatever we attack with is capable of being eaten by the Twins Elite. 
and I think our mana is going to be pressed for the next few turns, and our Sylvan Advocate's about to be online, so I'm okay with just offering up the Hangerback Walker. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, I feel like I'm getting Wingmate rocked this turn. Uh, then it wouldn't have even been a debate, so he's probably not rocking me. What do you know that I know? Don't know. Everything. I see. Apparently it's not a debate. I'm just big stupids. <laughs> Could eat this. Are the 1-1s one particularly valuable? I think just giving Michael a larger board is not something I'm interested in. I'll take two. 16. Go. I'm getting rocked this turn. Okay, so bring it to 16, that should bring me to 15, then these two attacks would bring me to 3. Yeah, I don't think that's going to make a difference, so. 15. I've got a forest. Let's hope this one goes better than last time. <laughs> Collect a company. Please have Thornbow Archer in it. That's all I want. How about double Shaman on the back? That's a little bit better. Uh, take 14. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep. I'm at 5. And I will just attack with these guys. I guess you can... You can put these three in front of them, and then I would lose every one of my creatures, but I'd be able to trade for both of these. Yeah, I am willing to do that. All right, I don't want to lose my wingmate rock, so... Just gonna block like this. Okay, I will uh, yep. give those two death touch. Okay. You can go. I'm just going to attack with my Wee Mirror Rock, get a 6. And I go to 12. Go. This feels like a secure the waste. Mm -hmm. um. 3, 4, 5, six. 6. Yep, I'm dead. All right, back here for the conclusion of Bant Tokens versus Green Black Elves. Um, yeah, the elf deck looks sweet. It got to do the things it wanted to do. Mostly just flood the board. Nissa looked really powerful in the deck. Uh, collected company, still collected company. And uh, even though you're not like working towards some like huge combo turn, like Rally the Ancestor does with their collected companies, just the fact that you can put a lot of power into play or draw cards or just deal a million damage with Shaman of the Pack is really effective. Yeah, getting double Shaman off a of collector company is basically a combo turn. Right. In that last game, I dealt 14. Yeah. I was a little worried after game one because my decks felt really anemic in that game uh, against your curve with two drop into... I know you didn't even have a two. You just played Reflector Mage into yep. uh, something else on four into Wing Me Rock, and I, I really didn't put up much resistance, but the deck was a lot more impressive in the last four games and squeaked out a victory. The Bant deck like, was doing a lot of powerful things. We know Advocate and Reflector Mage are great. Uh, we talked about this uh, between games, but Gideon was just not very impressive. Yeah, was Gideon was like pretty awkward. You were able to maneuver around it. Or, well, I, I guess I didn't even really get to play it because it would have been so easy for you to maneuver around it. Yeah. Uh, multiple games, it was kind of just rotting in my hand. I didn't feel like 
taking a turn off to get a, a 2-2 Night Ally on the board was, like, a good use of my 4 mana, and then I wouldn't actually be able to, like, really see dividends from it. Um, I might have messed up. I think it was game two. Uh, my sequencing might have been a bit off because my hand was full of, like, Secure the Waste and Gideons. Um, but regardless, I, I didn't feel comfortable just spending 4 mana to deploy it and get a 2-2. Yeah, before Oath of the Gatewatch, it felt like you could make that 2-2 and worst-case scenario, chump block a creature and then have this 5-5 five five or be able to churn up more 2-2s, maybe mm -hmm. Anthem. You have a lot of options with it, and that was well worth it. And now the farm has shifted towards a lot of powerful 2 and 3 drops. Again, Advocate and Reflector Mage yep. sort of being the, two the hallmarks of them. And they're both 2 threes. And Reflector Mage is going to decrease your board position leading up to turn 4, which makes it even more precarious to play Gideon. Because yep. if you ever played Gideon with a thing or two in play, then it, it was it was going to be great. And that, that just doesn't happen nearly as often in the post Oath of the Gatewatch standard. So Gideon has taken a real hit. Yeah, I agree. I uh, didn't really get to see like the Sky Spawner Nissa aspect of the Bant Tokens deck, so maybe those like synergies were a little less showcased than uh, they normally would in a five game set. Yeah. But do you ever even play a Nissa? No, I didn't yeah. play a Nissa or a Sky Spawner. Man, um, but you yeah, should I try mean, playing Nissa. The card's great. Yeah, <laughs> Nissa. Niss, I mean, we we got to see Nissa in the set regardless because it was it was very powerful for Ross and I, four of the games I think. Yeah, I um, a lot. really effective at getting his uh, anemic squad that. Their power toughness ratio might not be very impressive, but they're very easy to float out on the board. Dwinnin's Elite makes two bodies. Yeah. Elvish Visionary replaces itself. And then once you start to make those cards into two twos and two threes, three threes, um, yeah, they're very powerful. Uh, even Gnarl Root Trapper was, was pretty good. It let him let uh, Ross double spell in a few key turns, let him make some additional attacks, get some extra points yeah. of damage in. I think Trapper is just a good card. Anytime your okay. mana creature has a secondary ability, it, it, it's good. The, it does require a lot of you out of deck building. You have to have a lot of elves. Right. Fortunately, we have Sylvan Advocate. That's just a very powerful card that happens to be an elf. And then Shaman of the Pack is another really powerful payoff card. And Visionary plays into both of them. It's this incidental body that you can get, get some damage in uh, and threaten to trade with anything when you have Gnarl Root Trapper in play. And then gives you that extra card you get, getting an incidental body for free for no cost of, of material resources is really important in a critical mass deck. Yep. Because it just gives you one extra body that's one extra plus one plus one counter from your Nissa or from your Drana uh, and makes your collecting companies a little bit better. So the, a lot of the elves work together, which is really nice. So you don't have a lot of them, and uh, we've had to sort of resort to Thornbore Archer. It'd be nice to get <laughs> an upgrade there. Uh, I don't know. I'm hoping that they they print a cool zombie elf in Innistrad. I, I think it has happened before. Land of War Dead. Um, yeah, the, there B, have been BG zombie elves. BG2-2 tap yeah. for... I don't know if it tapped for black or green. I think it tapped for green. Yeah, I think it tapped for green as well. But some sort of cool black-green zombie elf would be great mm -hmm. as, as another addition. I'm, I'm holding out some hope because the one of the reasons I played this deck today was because the only things it loses in the rotation that happened with Shadows are the fetch lands, which are not an integral part to the deck, right. and the two murder scuts in the main. Yeah, no, I hadn't even thought about that. Um, I, I definitely expect Drana in general to be a more widely played card. Um, it kind of, just from the information that we have, like the black zombie deck is certainly looking yeah. to be a thing. And uh, Relentless dead. Yeah, whenever you're able to pump your squad, um, very powerful. She's also a vampire, which could very easily be relevant. Yeah, and we saw in the in the original Innistrad, the vampire mechanic was getting plus one plus one counters mm -hmm. in your guys, so the, I bet there's some synergy that they're setting up there. I'm a little worried. Uh, one of the reasons that the card didn't perform that well in this standard format was there was a lot of removal spells that dealt with it at value yep. between Silk Wrap, Fire Impulse often being one mana for three damage, and Draconic Roar, just the name examples off the top of my head, and now Surviving Rotation, Impulse gets a little worse, which is nice. Silk Wrap uh, stays in, because that's Dragons of Tarkir. So that's still there. And then we have Fiery Temper, which I expect to be very good. Uh, and uh, we still have Draconic Roar. And there's w one other that I literally just forgot off the top of my head. For Re Reflector Mage. How could I f forget Reflector Mage? And Dramoka's Command is, because of the, the high frequency of two threes, it's a, a pretty effective answer to Drana, yeah. generally speaking. And, and you saw I was never able to really get Drana going. Uh, even yeah, against a deck that doesn't have a lot of ways to interact with it. I, I think it was mostly just coincidence I had Silk Wraps at opportune times, but yeah. I mean, she was still very threatening. Yeah, the card's very powerful. I would like to like it to see some play. The one nice thing about it is, is if it connects once, like that, it, that's huge. Right. Being it's, a 3-4 is really big, then it, it survives a lot of those spells. Yeah, if the, if the game doesn't end on the spot, then your your position is snowballed significantly, yeah. and it's, it's really tough and to that, and catch up. That's another key aspect to... to uh, to have in a threat that dies to a lot of different removal spells, 
if it doesn't have enough of an impact on the board to force them to have it immediately, then it's not going to be good. But you can make up for some of that vulnerability by forcing them to have it now and uh, crunching them on time. Mm -hmm. You have to get, kill this now. Maybe you, you can even play it and force them to play awkwardly because they have to play off curve now and they didn't get to play their three drop or four drop uh, when they wanted to. They had to take that turn off to kill your Drana and then you can take advantage of that as well. Right. Uh, cer certainly a, a powerful top end or even just curve filler and aggressive deck. Um, again, even uh, Cletus has some minor synergies with uh, Drana, which could be a thing. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Shadows over Innistrad definitely looks exciting. Just, I I'm not even really into flavor, to be honest, but the Innistrad flavor is just awesome. Yeah, the Innistrad flavor. The I remember when they announced the double-faced cards mm -hmm. with the original Innistrad, and I was skeptical. one of the people that was very skeptical about it, and it was executed very well. Yep. I mean, Innistrad is just the best draft format of all time. I, I think I agree with that. Yeah. I, I had a lot of fun with it. So I'm sure everybody will be excited about that. We're going to be back next week with some post Shadows over Innistrad decks. Yeah, I, I mean, this is that's my favorite time of the quarter, I guess. When you put it that way, it's, it yeah. doesn't sound that exciting. But I, I love brewing with decks, uh, just playing new cards and seeing what's good. And, and so far, even though I think there's only like 12 to 15 official spoiled cards right now, there's four or five that are catching my eyes as potential build around me cards. So yep. definitely excited about that. Um, by the time you guys are watching this, uh, Ross and I will be in D.C. Or I will be. I don't know if you'll yeah, make the trip I yet. I think I'm going up Friday, so I'll probably be en route to Washington, D.C. Sure. Uh, so a, a pretty nice, easy trip for us, which we're thankful for. Um, but that's Team Sealed. Uh, hopefully you guys have checked out some of the videos that have been going up this week. Uh, mm -hmm. We did a group Team Sealed building exercise uh, kind of blending the premium and select side, which was a lot of fun and interesting experience for us. Yep. And we got some nice practice. Um, but yeah, Team Sealed's great. You guys, if you're... Well, you should just come. Just come. Yeah, it's just... It's the the most fun tournaments of the year. Just get to play... Like, when you sit down for a match of magic and you're just surrounded by a, b a bunch of people next to you that you yep. don't know, it's not nearly as fun. You get to sit there and play with your friends right next to you uh, talk throughout the entire thing, have a good time, and then your successes or their successes, uh, which magnifies them, but like it, it, it magnifies your successes <laughs> and, and minimizes. I love where you're going with this. Go ahead. Well, it magnifies <laughs> your successes and minimizes your failures. The failure gets oh, spread minimizes your yeah. failures. The, okay. the failure gets spread ac across three people, whereas the su success gets magnified by the three. Ross is displaying some optimism here. Some people <laughs> would disagree with this perspective, but I, I respect it. That's, um, I mean, that's just how it works. That's why it's yeah, great. Yeah. Well, I, I, I admit I'm, I'm getting there. I'm kind of jaded, but <laughs> I don't even care about losing at Team Seal because it's just it's so much fun. Yep. You get all that team drafts on Sunday. Yeah. It's just and and you already have a team. You don't have to like find yeah. a squad. Everybody's got their squad. Right? Just, just sit down at a table and get in the queue. Somebody will walk by and sit <laughs> sit down. But yeah. Uh, Star City Games is hosting Grand Prix DC this weekend. It's super fun. Come out, bring your buddies, have a good time. Um, not many team sealed tournaments throughout the year, so it's not something you should miss. Yeah, and this one's going to be the biggest one. It's going to be like 10 billion people. Yeah, approximately 10 billion people. I think there's a team of dolphins. And that's my <laughs> cue. All right. Well, if you guys are checking us out on YouTube, going off the rails. like, We're comment, done. share below. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the... I think it's the last time we're going to be playing standard, this standard format, yeah. Oath of the Gatewatch standard. So, send it out with a bang or Ross brown me with elves. Oh, well. <laughs> but <laughs> the perfect ending. We'll be at Grand Prix to see DC. You guys should come out. And thanks for watching, guys.